Okay, so this is a continuation of the integration of log and exponentials. All right, so are we ready? Okay. So if we look at our yellow sheet, or if you're looking at your notes from last night, either or, if you have a number to an exponent du or dx, you can see that your integrals, your yellow sheet is written in terms of like u substitution. It's like helping you figure out like this is how the u-substitution works for this. Then it would be a to the exponent over ln a plus c. So this is going to be, if we use our yellow sheet, 2 to the x over ln 2. And instead of doing plus c, because we're, this is a definite integral, we're going to evaluate this from 0 to 5. So that's going to be 2 to the 5th over ln 2 minus 2 to the 0 over ln 2. So we do have a common denominator of ln 2, right? Yeah. Yes. And 2 to the 5th is 32. 32. And 2 to the 0 one. is 1. And so our result is 31 over ln 2. Yep. That's the exact answer. You could type it in and get the decimal if you wanted the decimal answer. All right, number six is going to be 3 to the x over. 1 plus 3 to the x dx. This is a u substitution problem. So typically when we do u substitution problems, um, we're going to use the bottom to be the u because typically when you find derivatives, the result of a derivative is not usually things on the bottom. It's usually things on the top, right? Or whole numbers or whole whatever. So um, we're gonna say that u is one plus three to the x. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my yellow sheet over because I don't remember this derivative. Um, the yellow sheet you could use at the same time you use your cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. No. That has one. Uh, calculus does not have one. Sorry. Yeah. What? Well, what you'll notice in calc is that there's a lot of formulas, but not a lot of them that show up all the time. So the ones that you start to notice show up all the time, you'll start to memorize because they do show up all the time. And then there's some things that you can forget. This is one of the ones that like you can probably get by having forgotten it and be okay. I mean, I've, I'm a freaking calculus teacher and I forgot it, so anyway. All right, uh, the derivative of three to the x would be three to the x ln three, okay? So du is three to the x ln three times dx. So my u is on the bottom, right? My u is the bottom. Yeah, and on the top I can see the 3 to the x and I can see the dx, but I don't see the ln3, and so I can divide by that. And we are allowed to divide by that because ln3 is just a number. It's not um, a variable. All right. Is it still helpful for me to be marking the u's and the du's and all that stuff? You like that? Okay. So the u is right here, and then the 3 to the x dx 
is du over ln3. And so that takes care of the whole problem. So we have the integral of 1 over u times du over ln3. And what should I do before I integrate? So I have a 1 over u, but what, what should I do with this before I integrate? Okay, so 1 over ln3, I'll move to the front. Okay, and then Nancy, what were you saying? We can't have a 1 over u. Because if you move it up, you'll have negative 1. You'll have a negative 1, so we're not going to move it up and call it a negative 1. We have to memorize this one. Uh, absolute value, ln absolute. Yeah, ln absolute value. So we're going to keep that coefficient in the front, the 1 over ln3. And then anytime we're um, taking the antiderivative of 1 over u or 1 over x or 1 over t, that always goes to ln. So this is ln of the absolute value of u plus c. So 1 over ln3 is our coefficient. And then we have ln of whatever u was plus c. Okay. Why would you have to uh, because you can only take a log of a positive number. Okay. And so this is us saying we don't know what you represented, like all the different numbers you could have plugged into you in the beginning, but whatever we use now, it has to be positive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what did we put in for you? Three to the x. One, plus three. 1 plus 3 to the x. Okay, so this is 1 over ln 3 times ln of 1 plus 3 to the x plus c. And you could technically probably drop those absolute value and be correct because 1 plus 3 to the x, no matter what you plug in for x, that number is always going to be positive. Even if you plug in a negative exponent, it still just gives you a fraction. So no matter what you plug in, that, that number is always going to be positive. Now, they could write the answer like that. They could write the answer as ln of 1 plus 3 to the x plus c and then have this part be divided by ln 3. They might have written it like that. Um, I'm going to show you one more way they could write this because I think that sometimes we start to forget our um, log properties. So this is a division problem. Wait, never mind. We couldn't. That's it. That was the only way to write. Sorry. <laughs> Spoiler. Yeah. Yes. So if it was like one over one squared, would it be like the absolute value? Squared. If it was 1 over u squared, we would have just called that u to the negative 2 mm -hmm. and then done our rules where we add 1 to the exponent. So the only time you do an ln is if you have 1 over u or 1 over x or 1 over whatever. Well, wouldn't it then be negative 1 and you have to do it anyways? No, remember what I talked about in the video last night? Is This is the one case where if you wrote this as u to the negative 1 mm -hmm. and you added 1 to it, it exist. you would divide by 0 and it wouldn't work. Every other exponent is fine. u to the negative 2 doesn't do that. u to the negative 3 doesn't do that. The only one that does that is u to the negative 1. So this is the one that you have to memorize because it's the weird case. Okay. All right. And then one last example. We're going to integrate tan x dx. We're going to integrate tan x dx, and this is where I look at my yellow sheet, and I look at, dang, don't look at the back, because it actually has an answer. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is what, remember when we were learning, um, remember when we were learning de derivatives at the very beginning of the year? Yeah. Was there something that had a derivative, and the derivative was tan? No. No. So tan is not one that on its own has just like an integral where you can just like do it backwards and call it easy. Okay, tan has a special integral, so we're going to look at how to find that. Okay, and then after that, you can use your yellow sheet and just have the answer. Okay, so for this, we have to rewrite tan as something else so that we can use u substitution. Sine over cos. Good. And then we have to choose u, and we have to think about what's more logical to use for the u value. We'll, we'll think about it this way. Sine, if we chose sine for our derivative, 
then our, our um, if we chose sine to be our u, then our derivative would have to be 1 over cos, because cos is on the bottom. Do you see that? Look at the problem. If we choose our u to be sine, we choose then the our, we always choose the bottom. So we do yeah. Did you guys notice that? When you have a fraction, the u typically comes from the bottom. Because if we're looking at that and we're saying that our u is sine, that's not a cos in that th the problem. It's a 1 over cos. That's not cos in the problem, it's 1 over cos. So we do not want the u to be sine because we don't have the derivative of sine is 1 over cos, it's just cos, yeah. okay? So we're gonna say that the u here is cos x. And the du is negative sine x dx. I'm gonna divide by the negative one. So I have my u on the bottom, and I have that this part right here is du divided by negative 1. So I am integrating 1 over u times du over negative 1. And how can I rewrite that? Move the negative to the front. 1 over u du. And so that's going to be negative ln, LN of cos x, cos x plus, c. plus c. OK. Now, if you look at your um, yellow sheet, the yellow sheet has a different integral for tan. So that means we just found an alternate answer. It could be ln of secant u plus c, or it could be negative ln of cos x plus c. You got multiple options. So it could be Mm -hmm. So if you look at your yellow sheet, there is um, there is one that's recognized as being kind of normal, but there's another. We just found another one you can use. And I think what they do is sometimes they ask you to um, prove these back and forth. I'll go ahead, I'm going to show you guys where this one came from because I think I actually know. Um, can somebody tell me what ln of 1 is? Zero. It's 0. So if I wrote this problem as ln of 1 minus ln of cos x, is that the same thing as this? No. Yes. yes, right, because that's 0. So if I wrote ln of 1 minus ln of cos x, that's technically the same thing. Okay, does anyone remember the um, property of logs rules when you have a subtraction problem? Subtract is the same as division. So I could rewrite this as ln of 1 divided by cos x. And what's 1 divided by cos? Secant, that's where the other one comes from. Mind blown. Okay. Is that kind of crazy? I'm kind of impressed that I just thought of that on the spot. You guys should be impressed. That was not part of my notes for teaching. My notes ended. And then I was like, wait a second, I know this. Okay. So on your yellow sheet, if you want to add that we have this other one that we can find, negative ln of cos x plus c, they both work. <laughs>